Hello. In this video, I'll explain demand, supply, and the circular flow. In order to better understand demand and supply, we have come to consider the markets we're having. In fact, we're having two major players in the economy, households and firms. Household, their main function is to consume, and firms, their main function is to produce. In order to produce, these firms, they need resources that they will be supplied by the households, like labor, capital, and land. And in return, these firms, they will pay salaries and wages, profit, and rent for the households. On the other side, and if you see the output market, firms, they will supply goods and services to this market, and household, they will consume them, and in return, they will pay the prices. In the rest of the video, we will focus on the output market and we will see the demand and supply in the output market. Market demand. Quantities of good or service that people are ready, willing, and able to buy at various prices within some given time period. Other factors besides price held constant because we know that some other factors other than price, they affect demand. This is why we have to keep them constant in order to see the relationship between quantity demanded and the price. It's very important to differentiate between market demand and individual demand. So market demand is the sum of all the individual demands. Here we're having an example about pizza. So we consider at a price of $2 per slice, individual one will not consume, so it's zero. However, individual two, he will consume two slices, and individual three, he will demand three slices. It means at a price of $2 in this market, the quantity demanded for pizza will be $5. Also, you can see at the price of $1, we're having a total quantity demanded or market demand of 12 slices. Also, you can notice that whenever the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. Why? Because consumers will benefit from the decrease in price in order to consume more. Here we arrive to the law of demand. It's the negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. As price rises, quantity demanded decreases. As price falls, quantity demanded increases. In order to illustrate this relationship on the graph, we have to consider that at a price of 10, we are having quantity demanded of 5,000. If the price increases from 10, to 20, the quantity demanded will decrease from 5,000 to 4,000. And this is why we're having a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. However, it's not only the price that affects demand. This is why we're having non-price determinants of demand. First one is the income available to the household. If my income is $500, it will, my consumption will be totally different than if my income is 1,000. So this is why if I'm having an increase in income, what will happen, I will have a shift in the demand curve from D1 to D2. It means an increase in demand. The second factor we're having is the household's amount of accumulated wealth. And here we have to differentiate between income and wealth. Wealth it's the accumulation of income. So if we consider an individual having $1,000 in his saving account at the bank, and another one that he's having $1 million. So for sure here, the one who's having a higher wealth or a bigger wealth will have a higher demand. So here we will have a shift in demand from D1 to D2. It means an increase. 
The third factor we're having is the prices of other products available to the household, especially if we are considering substitutes or complements. Let's take the example of Coca-Cola and Pepsi. If the price of Coca-Cola increased, what will happen to the market of Pepsi, the demand of Pepsi will increase and we will have a shift from D1 to D2 in the market of Pepsi because it's not the price of Pepsi that it's changing. However, it's the price of Coca-Cola, which is a substitute. The fourth factor we're having is the household taste and preferences. Imagine, based on new study, oat is uh, considered to be healthy. So in this case, what will happen in the market of oat that people, they will want and they will demand more and we will have an increase in demand from D1 to D2. Also, another factor, it's the household's expectation about future income, wealth, and prices. So if we consider that the price in the future will decrease, so what will happen now, I will decrease my demand in order to benefit for, uh, from the future, okay, from the decreased price. So I will have a shift in demand from D1 to D3. Now, if we move to supply, quantity supplied is the amount of a particular product that a firm would be willing and able to offer for sale at a particular price during a given time period. The same here, other factors besides price held constant because it's not only price that affects the supply. The law of supply, it's the positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. An increase in market price will lead to an increase in quantity supplied. And a decrease in a market price will lead to a decrease in quantity supplied. This positive relationship existing between quantity supplied and price, first, it's due to, in the short run, if the seller wants to increase his production, the cost will increase. This is why he will be obliged to increase the price. Also, because if the price increases in the market, the seller will have more benefit to sell more. So he will supply more, so the quantity supplied will increase. For these two reasons, we're having this positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. In order to illustrate this on the graph, we're having, at a price of $10, we're having quantity supplied 1,000. If the price increases from 10 to 30, we can see that we're having an increase in quantity supplied from 1,000 to 3,000. Non-price determinants of supply, first we're having cost and technology. If we're having a new technology, or if our cost is being reduced, it means we are becoming more productive. This is why we will have a shift in supply from S1 to S2, it means increase in supply. Prices of other goods or services offered by the seller. If I'm a seller and I'm producing product A and product B, for one reason or another, product B is being more profitable. So what I will do, I will allocate the resources from B, from A to B in order to increase the production of B. So in this case, the supply of B will increase. Future expectations. If I know that in the future, the price will increase, what I will do now as a supplier, I will decrease my supply, so I will have a shift from S1 to S3. The fourth, Non-price determinant of supply, it's number of sellers, and here it's obvious whenever we're having new suppliers or new entrants, it means the supply will increase. Finally, weather conditions or crisis, if we imagine that due to bad weather and due to scarcity of water, we're having the production of tomatoes decreased. So in this case, what we're having, S1 will move to be S3, it means a decrease in supply. In future videos, I'll show you the instantaneous relationship between supply and demand and how we can reach market equilibrium.
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.